Sex with a stranger, a threesome, being tied up, sex with another woman. These are all some of the most common sexual fantasies shared by millions of women. And they're not only perfectly normal, they're an essential part of having a happy and fulfilling sex life. I'm Dr. Logan Levkoff, and I'll tell you why on this episode of Mom Ed in the Bedroom. Hi, thanks for joining me on this exciting episode about fantasies. With me is my friend, the founder of the Center for Sexual Pleasure and Health, Megan Andiu. Hey, Logan. Hi, Megan. Hi. So let's talk fantasies. Okay. Why are fantasies so important? Fantasies are fantastic for our brain, for our bodies. They keep us healthy. They keep us sexually connected. They provide stress relief. And we're fantasizing pretty much all day, not about sex, right? Well, some people fantasize all the time about sex, but most of the time, actually, people are fantasizing about winning the lottery, somebody cuts somebody off in traffic, and they're like, oh, I want to like hit that person. That's a fantasy, but people don't freak out about those types of fantasies. No, so but we love to freak out about sex fantasies, yep. and women's sexual fantasies have been part of pop culture for some time now, especially because of Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes. Are you surprised at all by this wave of the love of erotica and talking about women's fantasies? I am so excited about it because it puts women's sexuality and fantasies and desires out into the public so that we can actually talk as a society about it. Self-admittedly, I devoured all of the books. I loved them. I loved what I did for my libido and my sex life. And I, and I agree that I think it's an amazing thing for women to be able to tap into something mm -hmm. um, that they feel like they can own that gives them pleasure. Absolutely. And I think that is the, the key concept of, of Fifty Shades of Grey. And within all fantasies, it's a way of reclaiming your own sexuality. We've actually asked our Cafe Mom community about whether or not they fantasize. And they responded, heck yes. <laughs> <laughs> More specifically, they said, now that I'm pregnant, I fantasize all the time. Sometimes I fantasize so much it scares me. Or, my personal favorite, I fantasize much more than my husband. <laughs> Any of this surprise you? Nope. I'm so <laughs> thankful that they disclosed it and that they owned it and that they're talking about it. And the Cafe Mom community disclosed even more that the most common sexual fantasies they had were domination. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> sex with strangers, okay. and threesomes. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about why is domination exciting? Domination is exciting because it allows us to lose control of the scenarios that we're in. Moms are busy, they're taking care of their kids, their families, and when they're dominated, they don't have control anymore. They've willingly given it up to someone else. We are definitely micromanagers in a lot of our life. Sometimes it's nice to give someone else the reins and yes. say, you take control. I don't want to think anymore. I want to feel, but I don't want to think. And that is fantastic. They need that. <laughs> and what about threesomes? Because I think we often talk about threesomes as being a common male fantasy, but don't realize how common it is for women. Like the fantasy of having threesomes, engaging in threesomes, is very common for all gendered individuals. and. You know, just because somebody thinks about something doesn't mean that they actually want to do it. So let's talk about the, the fantasy that I think comes up very often with women, but we sometimes feel ashamed about it, and that's the sex with strangers. Sex with strangers is about losing control, about being desired so much. Um, Operating on pure instinct right. and lust. And I think in, in a lot of relationships, especially when you've been with someone for a long time, some of that intense passion goes away. Not that you can't have deeper intimacy, but right. sex with strangers gets back to that just going for Getting it. those hormones kicking up in high gear, <laughs> yes. So if you're looking to bring in some of this fantasy into your real relationship, mm -hmm. what are some good guidelines for how to initiate these conversations? So the first thing that I would say is communicate with your partner. Talk about recent news stories, and if it's something that is a particular interest to you, turn to your partner and be like, did you read that book? What do you think about that? Or and let's read that book together. Yes. And what if a partner isn't so interested in tapping into that part of your fantasy? So if they're not interested in tapping into that part, then I would say that there's always room for negotiation. So just because somebody has a fantasy doesn't mean that they want to act on it. So maybe they're okay talking about it, but they don't want to do it. Talking can be super erotic and, and is sort of underrated in how we often 
you know, consider sex. And it's also deeply intimate, like you're disclosing a lot about yourself, and that is where true intimacy comes from. So I have to admit that I was terrible in home economics. Okay. Uh, but I was very good at sex ed, Okay. obviously. Surprise. I love that you have ideas of ways to meld the two mm -hmm. for people who are interested in kind of spicing up their sex lives and fantasy lives without maybe going into a sex shop. And I think that we have a couple of things here in the box. I heard, yes. So if you go into any big store, you can go into the health and home and beauty aisle and pick up an array of sex toys. You just have to look at things in a different light. So an eye mask, you can use that as a blindfold. Sensation play, yes. Right. Ping pong paddle, you can spank somebody consensually. And you can also leave it around the house and no one's going to know about it. Talk hair. to me. Obviously not for hair. Yes, not for hair, but really cheap nipple clamps. And if you stretch them out a little bit, you can do some nipple type of play with those. And again, clandestine. Talk to me about this item. This is, oh, <laughs> if you use this with the blindfold, you can engage in really nice sensation play in which... That is very nice. Yeah. I'm taking that home with me. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> And last, I definitely have these lying around. Yes. I'll and give those to you. Thank you. And these are amazing restraints that can be used. The nylon feels nice against the skin. They're readily available. You can get them pretty cheap, and you can cut them off very easily. All about looking at household products in a new way. Yes. And they're usually cheaper at big box stores than at sex toy shops. So good to know. Mm -hmm. Megan, I want to thank you so much for joining me in thank this you. delightfully stimulating conversation about sexual fantasies in women's lives. Thank you so much for watching, and I want to hear more from you. Did this episode inspire you to embrace your sexual fantasies or even act some of them out? Let us know and be sure to subscribe to Cafe Mom Studios on YouTube and catch every episode of Mom Ed in the Bedroom.